Hi there, Janet Fritz here for Galaxy Girl Creations. Welcome to my channel and welcome to a Some Assemblage Required video, which means I'm going to be using some products from Some Assemblage Required. I'm combining today's video with Mixed Media Mayhem and Series 12 of Chrissy's Beautiful Life 30 Days of Sketches. The sketch today is from Jess Hill over at uh, Lakeview Creative, and it actually surprisingly worked really well with our inspiration piece from Mixed Media Mayhem, which is by Jana McCarthy for Hip Kit. And what I did was I rotated the sketch and um, used a combination of the two. So the sketch has some mixed media in the background. I rotated it because of the detailing on Jana McCarthy's are in the upper right and, and the lower left. And then I'm adding multiple photos, whereas Jana's only has uh, one photo and the sketch has multiple photos. So that's how I'm combining it today. I am using some Shimmers products. I am using um, Cantaloupe, I believe, and um, let's see here. I'm going to actually show these in just a few moments here. So if you hold out, I will tell you all the names of them because they'll pop up on the screen. But I did take a pencil to mark out where my photos are roughly going to be so that I don't waste my mixed media. I don't need to do anything underneath the photos. I just need to make sure that it's coming out from the edges and enough of it's going to show for um, any layering that I might be doing behind my photos. So I want to make it a little bit bigger than I had, um, than I, I would if it was just photos because I know I'm going to put a, you know, tuck different embellishments in, maybe some pieces of paper or something to that effect. So I just spray my little shimmers pots there with a little bit of water. Um, and I'm also using some water on my brush from my little uh, collapsible cup of water where I can clean my brush. And that is by Faber-Castell. I'll put a link down below for any products that I use so that you can uh, check those out if you are interested in that. And those are affiliate links. So I do get a little bit of a kickback if you choose to use them. Um, it's not required, obviously, but I do appreciate any support that you uh, do give. So anyway, um, just tapping in some of the darker colors here because I want to make sure I get some of the low, uh, the dark colors for a little bit of grounding and a little bit of the light colors to brighten everything up. I'm going really uh, soft with this. Um, these three photos are the girls at a pumpkin patch and they are sitting on a bale of hay. There's some pumpkins to the side and some corn stalks. And I really think these colors are gonna work really well with it. I didn't wanna go super orange. The photos don't have a ton of orange. Even the pumpkins are a bit muted in the photos, but I did wanna give a hint to it. And that's why I chose the cantaloupe uh, color because it's got an orange hue to it. And then the lighter color is get glowing uh, just to soften things up. And the darker one is chocolate and diamonds. I really like the way these go down. I do want to add a little bit of more, a little bit more depth here and there. There is a little bit of black in the photos. The girls are both wearing, surprisingly, they're wearing pajamas. They are black with like skeleton bones on them, uh, which you know is totally okay for Halloween or whatever. Um, and so I want to bring in a little depth of color. So I'm adding a little bit more of the brown here and there, and then I'm adding a little bit more of the get glowing. Uh, gold. It's a really light gold color and I'm just adding that here and there as well just to kind of um, bring in a little bit more color and uh, soften up some of the lines and um, add a little bit more layer. I just, when you're working with watercolors, the layering can go on really well if you let things dry in between. I know I already have this, the splatter down, but because I let it dry in between, I'm not really reactivating that unless I put a lot of water on. And so that works for me. A little bit more of the get, uh, the cantaloupe to bring a little more of that peachy color over to the left-hand side. And as soon as I get done with that, I'm going to go ahead and let that dry and then add a little bit of, uh, add my photos to the layout. Now my, my paper is a little bit warped. Um, in the past, I've always like, I've usually taped down my projects because I don't really like them to be warped. But um I don't know, sometimes I just am in the mood to work and I don't want to tape things down. I don't want to worry about it. So, you know, that was one, this was one of those times. Uh, I do have a bunch of things from this old Prima collection. It's called Amber Moon by Frank Garcia. And it's really old, probably, I don't know, at least five or six years old. I've had it in my stash for ages. And I don't do a lot of fall documenting. So 
uh, I just have not had a reason to pull it out and use it for much. So you're going to see that I have quite a bit of things left over and I'm going to go ahead and just start pulling those in. I really liked this striped diagonal paper and then I wanted to bring in again some more depth of color and so I chose that black polka dot paper and I think that one will work really well just peeking out from behind this striped one. Now in the inspiration piece, which I didn't pop the inspiration or the sketch up there because I, I didn't want one or the other to, to kind of take priority, but this um, the sketch has some detailing in two of the corners and so did my inspiration piece. And she's got paper layers and some stitching and so that's what I'm going to go ahead and do. And I really like the way that this comes out. I am using liquid glue to adhere these down because when I do stitching over the top, the liquid glue does not get stuck on my needle because it's dry. But if I use my ATG, then the uh, adhesive can get stuck on your sewing machine needle because uh, it's not ever dry. You know, it stays kind of gooey. And so now I'm just pulling the strings through the back of the uh, paper there and I am just taping them down with a little bit of washi tape because I don't want them to unravel. Now I know a lot of people like their strings to show on the front side and I don't mind it once in a while uh, when that's the look I'm going for. That de definitely wasn't the case for this particular one. So I just went ahead and pulled them through the back. You just take the bobbin thread, give it a little tug and you'll see the top thread um, pull a loop through and then you can pull it through the back and tape it off or glue it however you're going to secure it. <laughs> so now I've got these three photos and I've got this corn stalk that is from Some Assemblage Required. Uh, the pack I believe comes with two in it and I really like it. The, uh, the wood veneer from Some Assemblage Required comes with a um, masking over the top. I'm trying to remember what that's called. <laughs> it's a masking so you do have to peel those off but it does allow you to do a little bit of um, I don't know, mixed media over the top. So what I did here is I'm going to pull some of the masking off and I'm going to use some of the Get Glowing right over the top of the acorns, that, um, over the, the cap of the acorn to give it a little bit of a shimmer. And then I tried using some of the chocolate and diamonds to do the uh, vein work on the leaves. But the problem that I had is that it was so wet it went right through the masking so it didn't work great on most of the leaves it worked really well on a couple of them because I was a lot more careful um, and so I'm gonna end up doing a bunch of mixed media over the leaves to kind of cover up the mistake that I made um, it all works out in the end and I really like the way that these turn out but uh, if I were to use something that was a little bit drier than like a watercolor type of medium, it probably would have worked a lot better and the masking would have protected the rest of the leaf and I would have been able to just put the colors where I wanted them. So um, yeah, that, that's, exactly, that's what happened here. But those leaves, the acorns and the leaves are also from some assemblage required. I will put links again down below for all of these products and you can go and check those out. I really love the wood that uh, MK has over in her shop. They are really thin and they are adhesive backed so you don't even have to worry about applying adhesive to them. So I'm just trying to figure out the placement and exactly what I wanna do. Now these would have looked great just left natural as well, but because I decided to go ahead and see if I could do up the um, veining, I definitely didn't want to leave them natural because uh, like I said the watercolor went right through and again um, if I was using a smaller brush without as much water in it it probably would have worked okay but I am using a number I think it's a number 10 um, I think it's a number 10 anyway it's a it's a it's either a 10 or a 14 it's a pretty big watercolor brush and um, which I love for doing the background but probably not the best application for uh, modifying your wood veneer. So you can see I'm just pulling off the masking of the veins and that was really my intention of all I wanted to kind of cover. And in these small leaves it actually worked really well and I just leave those when it's all said and done. But the bigger leaves are where I had the trouble. 
So liking the way that it is working um, on the layout. I think the pieces all go really well with the layout. And because it's a fall one, these uh, acorns and leaves look great, kind of like falling down in a diagonal uh, pattern. Again, I'm doing another diagonal and I uh, seem to really love a diagonal layout. And this one is a little bit reversed for me because normally I go upper left to bottom right, but I'm going the opposite this time. And I, I, you know, I like the way that it looks. It's just, uh, I think naturally because we read left to right, that's typically the way that I end up going. So uh, these little round icon pieces are actually from Pink Fresh Studio. They're from an older collection. I'm not even sure what the name of the collection is, but the color was perfect and the sayings on them were just right. So I'm really happy with that. The uh, title, Pumpkin Love, is from the same Amber Moon chipboard set uh, from Prima, and I thought that worked out really well, and it brought in a little bit more of the metallics. So I'm happy with the way that that's looking. And this is where I decided I'm going to just cover up the entire leaf because they, uh, the watercolor went through. So now I'm pulling out a couple of different colors of my Dilutions. Um, one of them is Pure Sunshine. Uh, one of them is, I believe, Desert Sand. And there is a third one there, and I'm not sure what the color is on it. Uh, it's... Um, vanilla custard. Sorry about that. Little vanilla custard. And then that little last spray that I just gave was some Heidi Swap Gold Color Shine. I am drying those with my heat gun. It does cause them to bubble a little bit. Not too worried about it. Uh, it, it adds to the texture. I mean, it, they're not, they don't look bubbled when they're all said and done, but it does bubble a little bit because I'm kind of overheating them. I am also going to use a paint pen, a fine-tipped paint pen, and I'm going to go back over the veins of those leaves with a dark brown paint pen from Thule Art. And uh, again, I'll put the links for that down below. So I do have a piece that says fall. I don't, that doesn't end up making it on the layout. Um, I really liked this piece. I think it says, I will follow you wherever you go. Um, it, that orange piece that's kind of to the right of the layout, but it it was in the wrong size or wrong shape. So I found it on the sticker sheet in uh, with a darker outline around it, and I thought that was nice. It brought in a more depth of color to the uh, right-hand side. So I end up using that instead of the acetate piece. I am using some acrylic blocks to hold everything down uh, while it dries because my paper is warped the chipboard doesn't want to stick. Also, it doesn't want to stick because um, the adhesive on the chipboard is not so great. So I just added a little liquid glue to that. Now I'm just figuring out the placement of my leaves. And then once I figure that out, I will peel the back off and stick them down. Uh, while I do that, there is a playlist down below for 30 days of sketches. You can check out all of the inspiration that has been released to date. And there will also be links to the others playing along with Mixed Media Mayhem this week so you can go and check that out. You can also check out the Mixed Media Mayhem uh, Facebook group. We do have inspiration for the last Friday of the month and we invite everyone to play along. That has already been posted so you can go and check that out there. And uh, don't forget to check out all of the awesome items that MK has over on her site, Some Assemblage Required. Uh, she's got wood, acrylic, tools, um, she is also where I got my distress tool from. You can see it up to in the right hand corner up there. And I swear by that thing, I will not never use another distressing tool because uh, this one works so well and it's easy to hang on to. So go and check that out. Now I did just pull out some twine to add to this uh, tag that I've got in this corner here, just add another little bit of texture to my layout. And then I'm gonna add a few sequins. These sequins also came with that same Amber Moon collection from Frank Garcia at Prima. And they're just kind of like a dark uh, coppery brown. And I think that's adding in another nice depth of color and uh, contrast and sparkle. I did take my stuff over to my sewing machine. I stitched across the word pumpkin and across the tag that's in the upper right hand corner of the photos. And that is it, you guys. I hope that you enjoyed this video. The close-ups are coming and I've got quite a few of them so you can really capture what uh, those leaves look like. 
here are all the colors that I used on this layout and um, I hope that you enjoyed this one. If you did, I would love it if you left a thumbs up over the, uh, down below. And if you're not subscribed to my channel, I would love for you to subscribe as well. And uh, hit the bell for notifications if you would like to be reminded each time I release a new video. There's a good representation of what those uh, leaves look like. I hope that you enjoyed the mixed media portion of this video also. And if you have questions or comments, you can leave those down below. I'll get back to you as quickly as I can. Thanks so much for watching, and I will see you guys again tomorrow with another video. Bye-bye.